Uh, so we are going to talk about Perl 6 one-liners. So it sounds, uh, uh, yeah, exciting. Actually, all those one-liners are on the on one side they're simple because they're only one line. On the second side, it's really difficult sometimes to understand what's going on there in, inside. But okay, so let's uh, let's start. So there will be a, a few uh, sections in this talk, and we will start with some. Recruit a command line options, which are quite similar to those that you might find in Pool 5. Uh, so the dash E, yeah, it's just execute what is said uh, in, in, in the command line. It's really simple. The only thing is, for example, like here I can print the version of Pool. Uh, the only thing to remember is that it's Small e, not capital E, like in pool 510, you can use minus capital E to activate the say function, for example. The second one is, again, as in pool 5, dash n, it repeats the code for each line of the input file. So it reads the input file line by line in, uh, and transforms it or do something else. So here in this example is the uh, short one-liner with dash n and also dash e. Uh, that reads the file data txt, splits it by space, and adds up all the numbers. So basically, for each number, uh, for each line, you have the sum of uh, the numbers in the file. Really simple and maybe useful somewhere. And dash p is the same as dash n, but it also prints the uh, dollar underscore variable after after the line. So and actually, this one is already really pull six. Uh, uh, styled uh, example. So what I'm doing here inside the quotes is dot equals flip. So the dot is applied to the uh, current uh, the context variable dollar s. So we don't have to explicitly say it, explicitly type it. So you can just use dot, and it will be applied to this variable. So on each line, the current line is assigned to dollar underscore. Then on this dollar underscore, we uh, flip the line and assign it back to dollar underscore, and after that, the dash p command line option prints the result. So it just flips every line of the file with just, what is it, six characters of the code. And this approach is really a productive one. So you can use other uh, methods on the right side of the equal sign. So the second uh, big, big section is uh, how to use the main function. Uh, yeah, it's not uh, always about one-liners, but it's still really, uh, really uh, useful to know what Perl 6 can offer you. So unlike Perl 6, you can create the... Uh, unlike Perl 6. Uh, uh, so in Perl 6, you can uh, create a few versions of the main function. The main function is the function that is executed when you start the program, if there is one. And the multi keyword allows you to define a few v versions of that function. So here in this example, we have three versions, one with no arguments, with one argument, and with two arguments. And those arguments are, are those uh, command line arguments that you will supply in the command line when you run this program. So for example, if you run this program, like Perl 6 uh, main.pl, uh, without arguments, you will get the first function called and uh, all the rest also with one or two arguments. So this multiple dispatch happens inside Perl 6. You don't, you don't even have to think about that. So you can provide different uh, variants for different ca use cases. But what happens if you will give more arguments than uh, your program can handle? In this case, so for example, there's no function main with three arguments. It will just get the uh, help message from Perl 6. And this message is genera generated automatically. So. Yeah, there is some really uh, useful support from Perl 6 side. Uh, I'm not quite sure why uh, this help message only displays the option with two arguments, because I have three functions, and if I supply three arguments, I will get the usage case uh, with two arguments. I think it's incorrect. But uh, nevertheless, yeah, there is some support. Another side of this uh, multiple dispatch is that you can uh, create different functions for different types of the arguments. So here's the function for integer and for string. If you supply a string, yeah, it's, it's obvious, but what, ha what happens if you will 
give the uh, integer number in the command line. Who knows? Well, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it will get an error because uh, Perl thinks that it's ambiguous to call, uh, yeah, in this way. What we have to do, we have to use a different uh, type, instr, uh, integer and string in one, in one uh, go. So this will work with this uh, uh, 42 argument. And finally, you can also use this uh, star in front of the array. So this function will take any number of arguments and also uh, in the uh, quoted line, there's the interpolation of some embedded code in curly braces, which is really handy for such cases. Uh, yeah, so depending on the number of arguments, we just uh, print the number of them. And yeah, in this case, uh, you also can try to add other functions. For example, uh, a main function with two arguments and guess uh, what happens there. So uh, you should always check, I believe. Okay, so uh, text uh, files. So yeah, a spill initially was really uh, useful for working with text files. Perl 6 also can do a lot of uh, thing, things. Uh, I will give you eight examples, and I will ask you to, to explain what, it, uh, what those examples are doing. So the first example, again, so it's uh, dash n, p, and e. So it means that it will read each line, do something, and print the result. So what uh, this function will do, any ideas? Yeah, yeah, it will just uh, add uh, a separate, uh, so e each line will be separated by an empty line. Uh, so dollar in the regular expression is the same dollar as in Perl 5, and it will just uh, add slash n. Of course, you have to be careful about Windows uh, encoding of slash r slash n, but nevertheless. Uh, this one, uh, it's also really Perl 6-ish uh, example. So for each line in the text file, it will print the line if it contains any characters. By any characters, uh, yeah, uh, spaces are also included here. And again, dot is the simplification, is the shortcut for writing on the dollar underscore dot, say, for example. Sorry? Uh, yeah, because ch cars is just, uh, Charles is, uh, uh, is the length of the string. Ah, no, no, the, the slash, no, no, uh, yeah. No, uh, no because, yeah, uh, uh, otherwise you will not handle more than one line in this case. But also there's, uh, if I'm correct, uh, dot, uh, the method called nl dash something, uh, like uh, five characters, and this method contains the list of characters which are m matched against the end of line. So you can modify this uh, array, put there like slash r, slash n, or whatever, or any other character, for example, vertical bar, and it, you will change the behavior of Perl 6. Uh, this is another version of the same, but instead of dot characters, we are using uh, slash s, the regular expression, but it's not the same in the sense that spaces will not uh, uh, will not cause the line to be printed. So we'll not print, so here we only print really empty lines with no uh, spaces in it. I, I mean, w without lines containing only uh, spaces. And uh, yeah, again, uh, if we uh, talk about dot cars, chars, how do you pronounce it correctly in when, it's, uh, when it's shortened? Uh, it's one of the uh, methods to get the length of a string in Perl 6, so you cannot call dot length. Actually, you can. In this case, there's a special case uh, in Perl 6. Uh, it will just print you, please don't use me. Use either cars or something else. OK, so uh, yeah. Uh, the next thing uh, is, before we go in uh, further, uh, there's the dollar variable. So Perl 6 is not a noise language. <laughs> it's it's uh, a language that contains even such variables. And these variables, this variable is already defined, so you can use it straightforward uh, so immediately in your uh, code. Probably you should not use it in regular programs, but in one-liners, why not? Uh, it can be used both inside the subroutine and also outside it. So in the whole program, you can immediately use this variable. And like this example, it's also in the, in the documentation. Uh, 
will print the number before each line of the text on a file. So plus plus dollar, yeah, it's incrementing, you're incrementing uh, the value of this variable here, and tilde is concatenation. Uh, again, probably you, you could better use the uh, interpolation with curly braces instead of uh, multiple uh, concatenation operators. But so remember about this one for counting. So in pill five, I believe the, the, the simplest uh, and for this case would be using like begin uh, block, create a variable there and then uh, increment it. Or maybe not, maybe just, uh, yeah, nevertheless. Uh, so it will just number the lines. The next example, again, uh, uh, if you remember the previous example with flip, this example will also do something with the line. It will uppercase every char uh, all characters there and print it immediately. So you will get the same file, but in big letters. Another example of such approach is to trim uh, the line. So there are three functions for trimming. Trim, what is it, trim, well, trailing, or I forgot the name, but basically yeah, there are trim left and trim uh, right functions uh, to trim uh, spaces in the beginning or in the end of the line. This one will trim, yeah. Why is there an equal sign between? Uh, so yeah, uh, what happens here? That's a, that's a really good question. Uh, let me make it bigger. So, uh, yeah. so what we have here is this, right? Uh, what happens here? Basically, this is the same as as this, right? And all those constructions with uh, dot equal sign are equal to uh, equivalent to this. So that's why there's the equal sign. And because I'm running it with P, in the end of each uh, cycle, I have to put something to this variable, and that value will be printed. So I have to assign it back. So basically, instead of this, of course, you can, uh, yeah, basically, you can do it like this. But uh, in one go, if you do it in one go, just this uh, uh, simple simple trick is really uh, handy. Uh, and uh, another one, again with dot. So what this one does? So it only prints the first line, and after that, exit, exit. Uh, so uh, exits, uh, and the program is over. Uh, probably it's not. <laughs> the best thing to copy, maybe there are other methods like head minus one, but still, uh, uh, yeah. And this one is the modification of the previous one, and it's equivalent to head, head minus 10, so it will print uh, the first 10 lines, or maybe 11 lines, depends on where you put the plus plus before or after. But again, you're using the uh, dollar variable, which is pretty fine, and you can use it directly. It says 10, but yeah, I believe you. Uh, so uh, further examples will not always be the uh, one-liner with the dash uh, E. Uh, so it's just, uh, in this case, there's the file reverse.pl, and this file contains this line. So it's still one-liner. Uh, what it does, it reverse, uh, reverses a, a file. So uh, it will print it from end to bottom. Again, of course, you have some equivalents in uh, uh, Unix shell, but uh, in Perl it will be like this. And uh, you can also uh, uh, do something else. You can explicitly say where from you are reading. Uh, so you're reading, you are reading from the std in, which is uh, presented by this variable in Perl 6. And if you don't want to read from uh, std in, you can also try to directly open a file in your program. So it's a bit longer, but what it does, so argt is uh, yeah the array containing all the command line arguments. It's not arg v, it's arg s uh, arguments. And uh, star after the at character symbolizes the, uh, yeah, the, uh, what is it? 
global, it's dynamic, dynamic, I forgot the word, it's dynamic variable, well, yeah, it's available everywhere, and uh, in this case, I'm just uh, calling the .io method on it, it will create uh, an object which I can use to open the file. So, again, uh, see, he so here we have four lines in the uh, second line, and it's really handy just to append uh, method calls instead of using for it uh, in different uh, uh, order and uh, using uh, functions. In many cases, like say, can be called as a function and as a method. This, uh, in many cases, there's no difference between them. Another important thing, uh, well, important, uh, at least very interesting thing, is uh, the dynamic variable arg files. And if you will run this program, you see in the bottom that this program is uh, run with two files. And this program will print all the lines from both files, from left to right. So arg files will just uh, give you, gives you uh, the sequence of all those uh, lines from both files. Of course, it can be extended to three files, and etc. Uh, there are some limitations for this variable if you use it inside the main function. Uh, so yeah, check the documentation before doing that. Renaming files. You can also rename files with spell six. Uh, <laughs> what a surprise, but you can do it in one line. In one line. For example, this example, which Wendy really liked, uh, is uh, to rename your images, your image files, to, some, to make it like, yeah, with sequential numbers, uh, and I provide it with the, the template, imager, im, img underscore 0000, and dot g, jpeg. So all the files will be, uh, first of all, it will be sorted, so the first line. It takes all the arguments except uh, So it will take uh, arguments, sort them alphabetically, and for each of them, uh, you will do something uh, on the star. And star is whatever character, so yeah, it, it's really difficult to explain. When you type, you understand everything. When you want to explain it, uh, it it's more complicated. So basically, uh, we will have uh, another example of, like this. So instead of create the code block with curly braces and using under, uh, dollar underscore, you can just use star. You don't need curly braces. And Perl 6 will understand what you mean by this star. By this star, we mean, of course, the uh, element in the loop of map. So for each element, for each file name, so uh, the file names basically are uh, star J jpeg. It's Perl will receive it as a list. And this list will go to args, uh, and we only take everything except the last, uh, except the last uh, element. And for each file, we are calling the rename function on the IO path uh, object. And inside, we will give you the new name, and this new name will uh, be taken from the last argument. And plus plus, when it's applied to uh, a string like this with zeros, it will increment all the characters before the last digit. So basically, if you have the file name, like file name and extension, extension will, will be kept and the file name will be incremented. Uh, and we have to have uh, enough zeros to not get the overlapping, because otherwise, after you reach 10,000, you will increment the underscore character. What's the next character after underscore? Who knows? Uh, so yeah, Perl will not uh, even complain about that. He'll, it will just uh, increment it. It will not make it double underscore. But and if you have two dots in a file name, for example, again be careful that only the last part before the last dot will be uh, will be modified. Meta operators. Perl 6 introduced, well, until at, at least in the Perl world, uh, some meta operators. In many cases, it's either a capital or a letter, like Z in this case, plus some uh, uh, brackets. Actually, Z plus and brackets are two different operators, so don't mix them. It's not one, one uh, operator, it's two different operators uh, combined together. Uh, what this uh, code is doing, it gets the file with some numbers, well, with some uh, uh, numbers in columns, a table, and it calculates the sum of each column. So earlier today we saw 
an example which prints the sum, the total per line, here it's per column. It's a bit uh, different, but <laughs> again, if you will uh, explain it, first of all, uh, we'll uh, iterate over all the lines from the uh, study in, so lines dot something. For each line, we will map each line to something. Uh, what is this something? It's uh, the last part started words, so we'll split each line. We'll create words, so basically we will, ch we will split by spaces. And then we go uh, uh, to the beginning, and we have the reduction operator and the zip uh, operator for plus. So for each uh, those uh, 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 columns, because yeah, if if you want to understand this, you have to really uh, prepare an array, then uh, see what this Z operator is doing. It will basically uh, yeah. Uh, create uh, some uh, sequences with three numbers corresponding to each column, and then you just add them up. But uh, again, uh, just copy paste this, and you will get the results. Uh, if you have two files and on one, and you want to print them like together, first file on the left, right, uh, second file on the right, you can do this and comparing through the previous operator, you see the the, the difference is that after that. You have tilde, which is the concatenation operator. And again, you'll read the two files. The zip operator will uh, concatenate line by line, and you will then uh, print it in a loop. So dot say four, again, it's uh, another uh, pattern for print printing the array. Just dot say four, and on the right side, you have the array. You don't have to cr create loops uh, in traditional form. Product table. So another uh, example of how you can use a meta operator X in this case. So it will just cross uh, create a cross product of two sequences on the left and on the right. These two sequences are the same, but it's not uh, uh, the condition for this operator. So yeah, basically you will get this uh, sequence, which will contain all the products. Uh, products for all those numbers, for, for, for all combinations of these numbers. They are not sorted as you might want, uh, but yeah, it's, it's one liner, what do you want? Uh, factorial, a very classical example of how to create a factorial, the number, that, yeah, cal how to calculate a factorial in pool <laughs> six. So it's reduction operator, which is uh, two square brackets. And what it does, it just list the sequence on the right or the list on the right and insert the character, the star in this case, between all pairs of all those elements. So it will be one star, two star, three, and so on. So it's the factorial. Uh, but you can also use, it's not necessary that you use some operator like plus or minus or a star. You can also call a function if you create a function, well, in this case, it's a built-in function, uh, but you can also use your own function here, so the, there's no limitation. How to rotate a, ma a matrix? So you have this matrix, three lines, A, B, C, second line, D, F, uh, third line, H, I, J, and you want to print it, yeah, just rotate it. Just three characters will rotate your matrix. I will not uh, uh, explain this, but yeah, you have to feel it if you want to, to use this that. But this trick really does a rotation, and it, uh, it's not important how many uh, lines, how many columns, so it not necessarily should be square matrix, it can be anything else. The result is uh, uh, this uh, uh, sequence, so it's not printed, of course, line by line, line by line. <laughs> So you have to make something. The sequence operator, three dots, uh, is another example of very useful operator in Perl 6. It will create yeah, a sequence. And it's a really a smart enough operator. So to get the Fibonacci sequence, you can just show Perl. So the first two elements are 0 and 1. The third element and all the rest are the sums of two stars. And these stars, again, will be understood as current number and the previous one. 
and continue until infinity. So we will create a lazy uh, sequence. It will not, of course, generate uh, all the numbers and it will not keep it in, in, in memory if you don't need it. Uh, but you can use this uh, approach again. So we see there's the dot, dot, dot star. So it's kind of infinite list. Uh, but if you only want the first elements, just say how many you need. And this uh, hat 31 is basically another sequence from 1, from 0 to 30, including 30, but not 31. It's 30 elements. Ah, again, okay, so I made this mistake again. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, the next thing is uh, similar, but more uh, difficult in the sense that, so we're generating, we're just taking all positive uh, integers and we're grepping. So on each element we call the grep function and the body of the grep is on after the column on each number, we just call the is dash prime method. So it's the method which is defined for uh, numbers in Perl 6, and you can use it here. And then we only take the number, the uh, 10,000 first, if I'm correct, again, <laughs> uh, uh, element of this sequence. So it's lazy, but this laziness you don't have to even think about that. You will just take the element that you need. If you want to, to think about that, you can uh, call uh, the head. There's method head or skip. So you can just skip number of elements so that you uh, so you inform Perl that you don't need those elements and uh, Perl should not care about those. Usually, well, not usually. Sometimes it can uh, give you some speed uh, increase. Uh, prime numbers, uh, again, if you want to print something, but uh, here, this is another example of uh, using the for with uh, at. It's also a very productive uh, pattern. So print the number if it is prime and do it only for the first uh, 100, uh, for the first numbers below 100. So here, yeah, you have to read it from right to left. Maybe you can read it from left to right, but yeah. How to print the value of p? <laughs> Very simple. Perl 5 cannot do that. Uh, but you also, of course, you yeah, can do it like uh, with ASCII uh, characters. For example, there's the uh, atomic operator, which is the Unicode star with an atom. Uh, but of also, you can uh, use uh, ASCII characters to print. So this is, yeah. And my favorite, uh, uh, yeah, a bit later. So how to calculate the value of p? If you want to calculate, there's the well, there are a few methods. One of them, the, the probably the most uh, uh, known, is this Leibniz uh, sequence. And below is just the straightforward implementation of this sequence. So again, uh, inside, uh, so I'm iterating uh, over the first 1,000 one, 1, plus minus one element, uh, and I'm transforming each element to this uh, fraction plus or minus one divided by uh, an uh, odd number. And then I use the uh, reduction operator to add up everything and we're done. Damien Conway uh, 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 gave this example. This is much more uh, uh, beautiful, so it's not straightforward. So it's using, you see, the, those uh, green uh, characters, that's another meta operator which will apply slash division for each pairs. So basically, uh, I wrote this in two lines. So each line, each number in each line corresponds to another line, another number in the second line. So it's one first minus one third, one fifth, and one something, 9,009. Uh, uh, notice that uh, the sequence operator in the first line, it generates a sequence of uh, uh, one plus one minus one plus one minus one. Perl, Perl is uh, smart enough to understand that. Well, basically, yeah, it's multiplication of minus one each time. And in the bottom, it's uh, all uh, odd numbers. But the example is really nice. 
And my favorite example is to use uh, more Unicode characters. So here, well, P, the cross is multiplication, so it's the same as the SKI star asterisks. Uh, on, and the, on the right side of this operator, there's a Greek letter. It's a real Greek letter, so I can use variables with uh, non-English non uh, characters. And square is the Unicode su superscript, uh, yeah, which will just give you the second power of this variable. Sorry? Yeah. The heading says the area of the square. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Is there any difference? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, so, but yeah, is there any difference? Let's go, let's talk about random numbers. Uh, for random numbers, uh, there's, uh, well, of course, there's rand. Um, function and rand, man, rand method. We will see it in a second. Uh, but the first example is about how to generate with one line a random password. So what it does, it will take this uh, range from 0 to small z, <coughs> pick 15 elements, then join them together, and then print the results. So, so again, I'm uh, calling the method on the you know, other method and do it again. Uh, the, there are two methods, pick and roll. The difference is that pick takes 15 elements which are always different. <coughs> so if you have less than 15 elements in the range, you will have a uh, shorter result. Roll allows you to repeat uh, the characters. So yeah, you, you have to think which password is stronger. So yeah, just an example of uh, to see what's there in this range. So if you will just uh, iterate over the list from 0 to Z, of course you will get all the alphabetical characters plus some other ASCII uh, characters. So, but again, you should know upfront what you're working with. <coughs> so the random number, how to get the random number below 2019? Like this. So on the number, you can call a method um, which is also a really brilliant feature of Build 6 that you can call methods on the numbers or on strings, which is like not really uh, what you might expect, but it's really handy. And then you get a random number, which is not uh, which is not an integer number. Then you just call the int to make it integer, and you print it. The question to the audience: Is it a better random number or not? So comparing to this, I'm, I'm calling round more than once. Who, think, uh, who thinks it, it is better? Yeah, of course it, it is not, because yeah, you, you will shift the second round to smaller numbers, and this is the, uh, so it's one billion of random numbers in the first and the second case. Uh, well, that's a separate question, but I think even if they are truly random, you will not get uh, the flat, right, a distribution. Okay, yeah, uh, then you can call, uh, like, uh, SRAND every time after you, <laughs> you can experiment with that. So, so basically, this is useless, definitely, for sure. Uh, the Euler problems, uh, yeah, I, I think you're familiar with this website, uh, projectEuler.net. Uh, which gives uh, like yeah a lot of different uh, problems to calculate and to solve. They don't really like when people explain solutions. I see no problem with that. Uh, so of course you can always uh, try it yourself first. Probably not now. Uh, so the task number one, the problem number one, is to print the sum of all uh, numbers which are multiple of either 3 or 5. So it means like 3, 9, 6, 5, 15, 20, and so on. Of course, you can create a loop and check if the number is multiple. But then you have to be careful, for example, number 15, which is dividable by both 3 and 5. In Pell 6, uh, you can use the vertical bar to create the junction and grab the first thousand numbers 
and select only those which are dividable. This uh, percent percent is uh, the opposite to the modular operator. Uh, it's, uh, it, it returns true if the number is dividable by something, and this something can be either 3 or 5. So if you have the number 15, it will give uh, you true for, and it will give only one, uh, only once. So it's more than enough. Very useful uh, junction operators. So uh, if I remember correctly, uh, originally they were called quantum superpositions. Now they are just junctions. But in this case, you can read it just as or. If the number is divisible by 3 or by 5. Uh, this is my uh, <laughs> yeah, really strange uh, solution, which I did before. I came up to, with this one. But it's interesting because uh, uh, on the last line, I'm using the union operator. You can use, so you can generate two sets of, uh, or two sequences uh, of numbers. So the f function just generates me something. So I will generate the sequence of numbers multiplied multiples of three, and the separate uh, sequences multiples of five. Then I just uh, collapse them together. I will uh, get like 15 in both sequences, but after unification, only one of 15 will remain. And then I just uh, take the sum of, of these elements. So it's not a one line if you didn't guess. Right. Sorry? Yeah, right. Of course, you can write uh, all the programs on one line, and probably you know that you can use, you can uh, put all those semicolons and curly braces to the right side of the program, so it will be there, yeah, and uh, all the rest will be with no punctuation. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Uh, print. Uh, so the second uh, problem from that website is to print the sum of all even Fibonacci numbers below 4 million. So the uh, point here is how you can limit the sequence. So on the first line, well, actually, it's, the one, it's one line, uh, just I don't have enough space. Uh, on the first line of this uh, one-liner is, uh, again, the sequence which we already saw, so it's Actually, the first one should be zero, I believe, right? Uh, then, so it's the Fibonacci number, but we stop generating numbers as soon as we reach the limit. So this uh, star in the end is followed by some condition, like more 4 million. And it have to uh, make it one less. So that's why there's the star after the sequence. So the, the, not the star, but the uh, hash after the sequence, which will not include the last element from the sequence. And after that, it's simple. Just grab by the numbers that you need, uh, sum everything, and print it. Instead of sum, dot sum, you, you're calling a method. Well, of course, you can use the function sum with parentheses, or you can use the uh, reduction operator, square brackets with plus inside. Yes, that's a good question. Uh, it's not uh, intuitively correct. But it is correct. So it's not like you generate all the numbers which are less, but this is the condition when you have to stop. I, I don't quite like uh, how it's implemented. I mean, yeah, I would also prefer to have less or less or equal. It will be much uh, uh, simpler to understand. But this is the condition to stop the sequence. So as soon as you reach the number which is more than 4 million, then we stop generating and hash includes that number. Uh, well, yeah, you can, yeah, but yeah, for this example, everything works. Even uh, you don't have to have this hash, uh, hat because the 4 million does not uh, exist in Fibonacci sequence, right? So you will not <laughs> yeah, have it there. Uh, problem three, uh, we will not go over all the problems, but just some uh, selected problems which allow Perl 6 one liners. Uh, so find the largest palindromic number, which is a product of two. two uh, three digits number. So basically, we, we are taking numbers from 100 to uh, 1,000, excluding 1,000. We multiply those, and we see if the number in the uh, result is the number that you can read from both ends. You take this number, and that's what you want. Uh, and after that, you have to find the maximum number of these. So what I'm doing here, I'm multiplying, again, the cross product. Remember this x operator for the product table that we saw earlier. So I will give this uh, big 
product table, and I'm intentionally doing it from a bigger number to smaller number just to find the first to make um, less calculations, if it's possible. Next slide will show. Uh, and then I'm comparing, so I'm grabbing this big sequence of products, and the uh, condition is to flip the number, comparing with the number, and yeah. And I'm using uh, the EQ operator, but actually, yeah, probably equal equal will also work here because it's the number. Uh, if you want to make it faster, you can again uh, call the head method, so you will not take the whole sequence of these products. It will run faster, but uh, the number head 10, yeah, you have to guess somehow how, how big uh, sequence you need, how long sequence. Print the sum of big numbers, so that's the screenshot from the task. So there's uh, how many, I don't know, 150 digit numbers, and you have to add them up. Actually, actually the original task say, says that you have to print the first 10 numbers, because yeah, it's difficult to calculate the whole big number, but not in Perl 6. In Perl 6, you can just list all those numbers, the angle brackets, it's the equivalent of uh, QW in Perl 5. So you got strings, then you just sum, add them up, so use sum, uh, Perl will convert them to integers, and then you take the first 10 digits, uh, actually 10 characters out of the number, and print it. So here it's a few times will convert from numbers to strings. Uh, the problem uh, to calculate Sundays between, I think we are running out of time, but we have a few minutes. So you have two dates, 1901 and 2001. You can just immediately create the range, so dot dot, excluding the last date. And then you can grab all the dates and call the methods dot day or day of week to select uh, the first uh, day of month, and to check if this is Sunday. And dot atoms just give you the, gives you the length of the array. Uh, you can do it uh, more explicitly with, uh, so we see only year specified here. Here you have the whole date. And uh, some um, uh, readers uh, offered this uh, uh, more compact solution. The plus yeah, is just like you are uh, getting the number out of something. Basically, it's dot atoms in this case and you just grab by Sundays, and you only create the uh, date uh, with the first of month. Well, obviously, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's another point that you have to always check before uh, using it. Uh, print the numbers, the sum of numbers which are equal to the sum of factorials of their digits. Yeah, it's difficult to understand uh, when you read it. Uh, <laughs> Probably it's difficult to understand when you read the code as well. Uh, but uh, what, what is interesting here is the dot .comp is a real useful method which will, which will uh, take a string and give you the list of uh, its characters. So it just it will split by characters and then just do some uh, mapping uh, and find. So instead, inside the map, I'm using uh, the uh, pattern to calculate the factorial from this number to the number corresponding to these digits, then I add them up with the brackets plus uh, reduction operator, and I'm comparing with the current number. <laughs> so yeah, and I'm using again the uh, reduction operator in the beginning. Okay, so the, the final part, the golf. Uh, it might be, uh, it may, maybe not everyone would love to promote golf uh, if we're talking about Perl 6. Not to just say that Perl is a noise language, but nevertheless, some techniques you can uh, <laughs> use. So this example to print first prime numbers, we, we actually it's the first pri the prime number number uh, ten thousand one. Uh, let's re reduce it. So first of all, the first is to re replace the range uh, with uh, not the range, the index with. Uh, uh, is it correct? Yeah, but nevertheless, so the C, yesterday I demonstrated so C, it's a Latin, uh, Latin uh, Roman letter 100, well, well, 10,000 in this case. No, I think uh, I'm mixing the numbers, yeah, 100. Nevertheless, <laughs> so yeah, ignore this, but this one is correct. So uh, yeah, again, again, comparing uh, like 30 or 31. Uh, so this example we saw earlier, so we're printing the first uh, uh, Fibonacci numbers, let's compact it. So, of course, of, course, of course, the first step is to reduce all the, to get rid of all the spaces where, where possible. Notice that it's not possible to remove the space after the four before opening braces. 
Uh, and then there's this shift-shift uh, operator, which will apply this method dot say for everything on the left. It's not recommended because, in theory, Perl, fix, uh, Perl 6 can uh, make it in parallel and the order is not guaranteed. Yeah. That's also true, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. The next step is to move to the Unicode space. So we uh, replace three dots with uh, one character, the same with uh, uh, two uh, arrows, uh, two, mm, yeah. Uh, then uh, this one is, this time is longer, but we can just give the, because it's golf, we don't care. We can just give the answer immediately if we know it. It makes it longer, but we can make it much shorter. We can do it like this. seven. Power seven, and uh, if you will go to uh, the Unicode sheet, uh, you will find this number, number eight hundred thousand. This is exactly what we want. Uh, you cannot print it, but who cares? So <laughs> this also works. So yeah, and yeah, and uh, basically that's the end of this story. I hope you enjoyed it.